things you love with TCL. Hockey, yeah, yeah. My favorite. It's Judd's Hockey Show. I'm not trying to focus on being calm or quiet, maybe, but just trying to focus on being patient. I think that's the that's the key word there. I would, I would probably put it that way. It's just when you're when you're patient, you look calm. Obviously, I've been working on that with Freddie also. Obviously, it's a new, new league for me, and when you go to a new new league, you gotta adjust a little bit. Or we haven't changed my game much, but just uh, you know some little adjustments. So uh, I gotta give uh, credit to him also. And welcome into Judd's Hockey Show. It is a one-timer edition off the uh, Wild beating the Vegas Golden Knights on Monday night at the XL Energy Center 2-0 in the first of a two-game set that will resume on Wednesday evening, also in downtown St. Paul. I am Judd, executive producer and co-host Declan Goff. And of course, you just heard from the new number one goaltender, I think without any debate right now, for the Minnesota Wild. And that would be Capo Kakinen, who stopped 26 shots in route to his seventh consecutive victory mm -hmm. um, and in route to the first shutout of his career. And Declan, I want to rewind to discussions that we had before the season started. So in the fall, okay, um, when we were talking about uh, Cam Talbot ha having signed a three-year, I think $11 million deal with the Wild to be the number one goaltender. And I think our, not debate, but our discussion was, is Stalock or or Capo at that time? Because we didn't know that Stalock was going to miss uh, time and eventually be claimed off waivers because of a uh, bout with COVID. Um, we were basically, or I said a lot, well, I'd really like to see Coppa play. I like, I'd like to see what, what they've got here because he, he was the uh, Baz Bastion goaltender of the year in the American Hockey League last season. He obviously played really, really well. And I remember you, you didn't say this, but you found, I think, some scouting reports or some some insiders, right? Experts. Yeah, some scoops. In air quotes, some scoops. Some scoops. Saying, you know, this guy is probably a career backup. Um, he's He's got a weakness here and a weakness there. And he certainly was a good minor league goaltender, but we don't know if it translates. And in fact, I think some of the experts, again, in air quotes, thought it didn't translate. All right? Couple cocking it now because... Uh, Talbot started the first couple games and then got hurt and then missed another stretch of time when the Wild came back from um, their COVID stoppage. Kapil Kakinen has played more games. I think he's at 13, and I believe Talbot's at 10 games right now. Mm -hmm. This is why we wanted to see him, right? Like, this is everything we wanted to see. Because a year ago, we can say with beyond a shadow of a doubt, this team's goaltending was absolutely, for the most part, especially when it came to Dubnik, atrocious. And I, and Bill Guerin, rightfully so, after the Wild returned to play in the bubble and got ousted, I believe it was in three games by the Canucks, Bill Guerin said the goaltending has to improve and essentially said, I'm going to change it. And he went out and signed Talbot, which is absolutely fine. But in seeing Koppel play, I believe it was three games throughout the course of last year when, when the Wild was desperate and had some injury problems, he looked pretty damn solid. And the one thing that impressed me the most is, and I think it was the game against the Devils that I think they won uh, in New Jersey. The thing that impressed me the most was for a kid getting an opportunity who at the time I believe was 23 for a goaltender. Yep. He looked unshakable. Like he didn't look like, oh my God, I'm playing in a National Hockey League game and I got to be, I, if I'm not successful, my career is done, right? <laughs> uh and that's the game that is translated, and that's what I like about him. Yeah. He is consistently, and I understand there's going to be bad games, and I understand there's going to be bad stretches. It's the nature of the beast in goaltending. Yeah. That being said, he looks consistently in control, and you don't see a lot of juicy rebounds, I don't think, that get away from him. And you see, you see enough things to give you reason to believe that this kid has a future as the Wilds top Colton. I think so. Uh, yeah, there was moments, uh, especially against Las Vegas uh, yesterday where, yeah, I mean, and keep in mind, they're without Mark Stone and and what, Bertrangelo was also out yeah, of the yeah. lineup. So Very I mean, fair. And, Good point. And, and those are two, you could make a case, two of their top three players right there. And that team is still deep too. They're still stacked. They're still a very good team. Even without those two guys, I still think they probably have a little bit of an edge over the wild at full strength. However, um, there was moments throughout the game where you could just tell he was so comfortable. He didn't freak out. He didn't overcompensate. Um, to put on my goalie spectrum hat there. Like th there was just, even you could naturally see an, an un uneducated eye and even my street hockey and boot hockey goalie prowess could tell that there was some comfort in his game that was that was worth showing. And 
when Cam Talbot was signed to be the Wild's number one goaltender, I mean, that was that was the signing. It was Devin Dubnik is gone. We're going to have Alex Stalock and Kapo Kakinen compete for the backup job. But Cam Talbot is your number one goalie. He was phenomenal in Edmonton three years ago. He kind of resurrected his career with Calgary, played well in the playoffs down the stretch for them last year to earn that number one contract with another team. Um, and you know what? Talbot got off to a nice start here. He had, he had strong back-to-back starts. Then he got hurt. Then there was a COVID situation. And Kapo Kakinen on the flip side to play catch-up basically lucks in to the backup role here because Alex Stalock has a, has a scary bout with COVID. So, I mean, it, it, I think all things considered, if, if Alex Stalock doesn't get COVID, Kapo Kakinen doesn't make your opening night roster. You might be right. I, I, I think it's it, yes. it, odds are he doesn't. I'm not, you know, there could have been enough in training camp or something that sure. Dean Evison and Bill Guerin said, you know what? No, we want to give the backup job to Kapo. He deserves it. Yep. But I would say it was probably a 80% chance that Alex Daylock would be your backup goalie going into the season after you signed Cam Talbot. Mm-hmm. Well, then after Talbot got hurt and the COVID situation happened for Minnesota, Kapo steps in and fills in not just admirably, but, but starts playing very, very well to the point where, well, I mean, we know Talbot was signed to be the number one goalie here, but Kapo Kakinen is playing better. And he is, deserves more time in the cage. And even with all the slew of games the Wild have, what, just one, no more than one off day in the month of March, or between now and March 25th, you don't have any more than one off day. There is going to be a tandem split here, but there are going to be moments where you're going to have to give the goalie back-to-back starts. Not back-to-back on the same night, per se, right? but back-to-back appearance starts. And I think Kapo Kakinen has done that so far. Um, I'm curious to see how long-term it is because we have been teased by goaltenders before. Th- th- we've seen stretches like this happen. Uh, Darcy Kemper had a run like this. Josh Harding had a run like this. Yeah. Um, this is not uh, anything that is unexpected in wild lore, but I can say that this is probably the first goalie since Nick Backstrom where you see something as a young goalie who gets off to a nice start in his career, they say, oh my gosh, there, there's a franchise goalie. You don't have to trade for a Devin Dubnik. You don't have to buy low on Briz Goloff. You don't have to throw Darcy Kemper into the Wolves. You know, I mean, th- even though the team has had recent or, or just weird stretches of goalie success from all the way dating back from Fernandez to Rolison, et cetera. And that was a system too. Correct. Like that was Jock. That Kyle Cockney as a 24-year-old, you're reigning AHL goalie of the year that, oh my God, like, look, Cam Talbot is Cam Talbot and he can get paid how he gets paid, but I think it's clear cut who the number one here and who his number two is. So, Cabo, uh, without a question, should start Wednesday night because he's got a day off here. And and keep in mind too, when they played the Golden Knights in Vegas last week, Cam Talbot started Monday and he started Wednesday and he made some nice saves. But the fact is, in, in those two games, the Wild gave up a total of ten goals and he gave up nine goals. Okay. So with the way that Capo played on Monday, he deserves to start Wednesday. And now Talbot starts for sure one of the weekend games that they're going to play at home against the Coyotes. So I'm not saying with the way that this schedule is going to play out, every team needs two, if not at times three guys. So this is not saying that Talbot shouldn't play a lot. He's going to have to. But I think Capo has earned the right to start again against a very good team. Here's what I, so here to address your point, Here's what I like about Capo. Um, and I think it's it's telling of the style that the Wild is playing and certainly played on Monday. And I think it's telling of his style as well. Okay. There have been some really nice saves. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that he has not made some fantastic saves. He has. But I don't feel like very much with him is flashy. And I say that in a good way. It just feels like there is a, a, a control with his saves and with the puck itself. Like there were times when Dubnik would make, you know, some huge saves, but it always felt, but it, at those times it started to feel flashy at times, right? And it, it felt like there were, and it turned out to be true, with Devin Dubnik, peaks and valleys, weren't there? Like there were these, oh my God, I can't believe the period he just had. And oh my God, a shot from the goal line just went off his skate and went in. And it felt like there were ups and downs and fluctuations. And that is how some goaltenders are. With with Kapo, what I've liked is, for the most part, I think what we have seen is just a guy who looks comfortable and steady, and he doesn't look like he's trying to impress you. He doesn't look like a 24-year-old kid saying, I got my chance, I'm going to show you. He feels like a guy, it feels like you're watching a guy who's played goaltender for a long time, who's very comfortable, 
who knows what he's doing positionally and who is effective because of that. And I guess, I guess because we spent, and look, Devin Dubnik at one time was very good. So I'm not trying to put him down. When he got here, he was fantastic. And he single-handedly that year got the wild to the playoffs. But in recent years, it feels like it turned into a Dubnik roller coaster. The ups, the downs, the great saves, the terrible goals. And I think we were all prepared for that to just end. And look, Kapokokkanen is going to get, give up goals, and I'll go back to what I said before. He's going to have bad nights. He's going to have bad stretches. But I think if there, I think what's welcome now from him is the stability that appears to be there, and the previous lack of stability and the previous ups and downs became maddening. And that's why I, I do think. Beyond a shadow of a doubt as well now, though, the one question that has been answered, unless something changes drastically, is who gets protected goaltender-wise in the expansion draft. Because I I think the assumption of of Garen and a lot of the people with the Wild going in was it was going to be Cam Talbot. Right. It's not now. If you take Cam, that's absolutely fine. But the Kraken would be your club. The Kraken would be absolutely crazy if uh, Koppel was exposed not to grab him. So I think he becomes the goaltender that you have to protect. Absolutely. Um, and look, you look at a lot of major statistics right now. He He's right up there for all the more important ones. In, in terms of five-on-five five save percentage, he's six. In terms of high danger save percentage, he is, as I pulled up here, he is also seventh. I mean, high danger save percentage, as in the, 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 the most high danger situations where a goalie is going to be more vulnerable to give up a goal. The guys that are ahead of Capo are Bezilevsky, Flurry, Carey Price, uh, Cal Peterson, who's having a nice year in LA. I mean, you're talking about a goalie who is also putting up very, very strong numbers. This isn't just a small sample size. He's literally making all the saves he's supposed to. GSAA, which is goals saved above average, which is a, an advanced statistic, but it's calculated by the league's average save percentage with the number of shots a goalie has had. Um, so th- that resulting number is the average goals a goalie in whatever league you're evaluating would have surrendered if they took the same number of shots as a goalie you're evaluating. So Devin Dubnik was always not prone to have a good GSAA because he would allow the fluky weird goal. Mm-hmm. So that, 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 again, back from my analytics rant from last week, which I won't get into, you can see that the analytic and the eye test would match up with that with Devin Dubnik that you knew his save percentage was always nice, but he would let in that fluky goal. That's where GSAA would come into the factor that Devin Dubnik wouldn't be as productive as a goalie from league average because he would let in the flu- fluky weird goal. But Capo has done, I think, more than enough to be the Wild's number one goalie. And if a playoff series started today, which, by the way, if the Wild are able to buy and get some type of center, they give Vegas a run for their money. I'm not that Vegas is favored in that series. But if if you get this team a legitimate center, they're going to give Vegas fits. I mean, if you're just looking at the three games that they have played against Vegas, the Wild should have won the first one. They didn't win it, I know, but they should have won the first one. They won on Monday, so they've essentially all they they would be up two games to one in a series if you really play it out like that. So I think they can give Vegas a run for their money. And if I'm Dean Evison, I think you'd be foolish not to put Capo Coppinen as your game one starter in theory, if you were in a best of seven series against the Las Vegas Golden Knights. Last thing uh, for, for this one-timer edition of Judd's Hockey Show, the power play. Oh, God. We got to talk about it. Ugh. Like, no, but we have to. Okay. We have to. Okay. Oh for 2 last night on the season in 23 games, okay? The wild power play is five goals, 74 opportunities. If you're not a math major, and I'm certainly not, but I am looking at it, the percentage on the power play is 6.8%. The Red Wings are are next. So you're the worst. The Red Wings are 30th in 26 games, 8 for 75. But at least they're above 10%. They're at 10.7%. You're at 6.8%. I believe, if I am not mistaken, the Wild has... One power play goal on home ice, okay? I need your help here because I am baffled by this. Your first power play, which you are using now for almost the entire session, okay? So, like, you've abandoned... Last night, they basically abandoned a second unit being used. Mm -hmm. Was Eric Sinek at center, Zuccarello, Fiala, 
uh, Kaprizov and Suter. And Zuccarello, Zuccarello's on the point. So it's it's Fiala and Kaprizov as the wings to Eric Sinek at center. Okay. Zuccarello on the point and Suter. And the only thing I don't get about that is I don't understand why Ryan is playing. Because to me, I'd play Dumba or Spurgeon above him. But I'm still talking, Declan, about Fiala, who last night was fantastic. He yep. had a great game. Yep. I'm Five shots, hero. scored the uh, first period goal, completely used Zach as a decoy, never considered passing the puck for one second. God bless him for that, okay? Kaprizov's a star. Didn't have a great game last night. Fiala did. Zuccarello has played really well. It makes no sense, zero sense, that your power play is five for 74, has one power play goal at home. Declan, the only assumption that I can come down to now is it's coaching. Because, like, what if they were putting out a bunch of, like, if they were, if they didn't have guys that could score, I'd be like, well, they're just not good. They suck. Okay. But I just gave you at least four names of guys that can all score. And, I have to come back to it has to at least be partially based on coaching. Like you you would you would have to work to be this bad on the power play. And the fact that this team on special teams is as bad as the Vikings were and they are what four points behind the Golden Knights is a miracle. It's a I mean special teams is a very important part yep. of hockey. Yes. It's bad. Go. I I don't I don't help think me. uh I mean help me. It's coaching. It's also mental. Um, I don't think the players, they just stink. I Hey, guess what I was doing last night? Watching the Vegas Golden Knights broadcast. Uh, Steve McKenna? Yep. Mike McKenna. Mike McKenna. Mike McKenna, Mike McKenna, former goaltender who was very good, right? Who uh, nailed it and said, anytime this team's on the power play, they just completely lose their confidence. You can see it on the ice. By the way, a certain broadcast that's local would never, ever, ever, ever say those words. So, so I appreciated that. Yeah. But our friend, Jesse Pierce, friend of the show, she looked up, uh, she tweeted this out yesterday. The worst power play percentage by a team in one season was the 97-98 Lightning at 9.3%. Well, 9.3. I was going to look that up. That's good, good for Jesse. That's awesome. 9.3. Shout out to Jesse. 9.3%. The Wild are at six. It's not like, oh, the Wild are, you know, they're at nine. The Red Wings, the next closest team, who yeah, is 10 plus. 30th in the NHL, is over 10. And the Red Wings are a complete dumpster fire. They're a joke. They're awful. They're awful. So the Wild are 3% lower than the worst power play that has ever been reported in a full season. And it's or some, in a season. But I mean, you're 23 games in. At some point in time, what do you do? I don't know. Like the personnel you've got out there is actually the right personnel. Hey, with the empty net, I kind of like this whole just give the Wild a goal thing like, uh, like they did at the end of regulation yesterday. But uh, how I, do you have... I don't know. How, I don't know what you do. How do you have 22 and 97 out there? Like, we're talking to two elite talents, two of the greatest talents to ever wear a wild jersey, right? It's kind of sad, but yes. But, yes, I mean, they are. But it is. In it's, 20 it's, years, it's they're two of the them. greatest talents to, to ever wear, and your power play is operating below 6%, and I don't understand it, and you can no longer, you know, I was five games in, eight games in, I was more than willing to buy, ah, yeah, that's just, yeah, it's going to be fine. Happens. It happens. Yeah, exactly right. Here's the scary thing. The first power play goal that they scored this season was against the Ducks, and in retrospect, shouldn't have been allowed. They should be yeah, at four power. Hand. They should yes. be at four power play goals. Yeah. Anyway, it's... this is this is a story. Like this is you can't ignore this. Yeah. It was uh, McKenna's line was their confidence completely evaporates when they get on the man advantage. Yeah, but it makes it's genius. He's it's, right. It's he's, a, he's accurate. On, he's hundred percent right. But it's it's the confidence evaporates, and then Declan they they just become useless. Yep. And they can't set up. They they did, and I think Walls brought this up during the last not last night's game, but the last game that they played against the Coyotes. They came. Uh, in, in fact, it was the second power play because Greenway was on the unit. And they came in and just basically shot. And Wes's point, which was a good point, is when your power play is going as bad as theirs is, don't try and set up. Because, like, you're setting yourself up for failure. Right. And then the play gets broken up and cleared down the ice. And Wes's point was, that's a smart play. Just come in and try and shoot, which I guess I agree with at this point. I mean, at some point in time, pucks have to just start to go in. It's hockey. It's what but, happens. <laughs> but to McKenna's, but to the point that you brought up that's intriguing is, it feels like the more work that you do to try to make it work, 
the less it works. Yeah. And the more you just sort of bank on it being, okay, eventually it's going to be a shot and a fluky goal is going to be scored. That might be the best plan. Yeah. But it is 23 games in and your power play is tracking to be, as you just said from Jesse Pierce's tweet, historically bad. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what to do with it anymore. I, I don't get excited. I know they're not going to score. And and I'm and I'm just I'm not sick of talking. But aren't you? About wa- but, but but aren't you curious? Like yeah, it's going to cost them. But I mean, aren't you wondering how it's not how how it looks this bad? Like how do these guys, all of these guys, lose confidence? Like Kaprizov's out there. Yeah, John, like I I really don't like know. Parisi. I could sort of explain. Yeah, because Zach is Zach. Go back and watch the the Fiala goal which was essentially, what, a two-on-one last night? Mm-hmm. Um, and that snapshot, by the way, price of admission snapshot, oh, my God. Uh, go back and watch that, though, and watch Zach try and keep up with that play, and you'll know what's wrong. Yeah. I mean, Kevin Fiala, who's really fast, don't get me wrong, he's great, uh, but he's, like, blowing away. He's like, boom, and Zach's like, hey, wait for me. So that's what's wrong. Now. Nope, yep, I, I, I'm done with the power play. Don't care. Well, we got to talk about some more. All right, that's it. Um one timer Judd Hockey Show back with a full show, not on Wednesday because the Wild obviously concludes the series against Vegas on Wednesday. So we'll be back with the full episode on Thursday, wrapping up that series, looking ahead to um, the Wild's home series on the weekend as well. I'm Judd, and he's Declan, and he likes to say this: "Pass, shoot, score."